And here we go. All right, I'm still at the Homesteading Life Conference Woman's Retreat 2023. It's our first annual retreat. Stacy's back here with almost 100 ladies, all learning how to take care of themselves better, how to take care of their families better, and just all this kind of health and nutrition and stuff like that. So keep an eye on the homesteadinglifeconference.com website for updates on our future conferences that we'll be holding, one in the spring in 2024, one in the fall in 2024, and another woman's retreat. And even though things are melting down all around us, we still operate business as usual with our ear to the ground. All right, so today's video, I'm not gonna do much talking. I'm gonna show you this clip, and I want you to just, I want you to just listen to what they say I want you to take a second and let it soak in. I'm not adding any commentary. It's no secondhand anything. These are This is actual footage from people that are talking on issues that are gonna affect your life very hardcore soon, okay? So make sure that after you listen to this, you smash the thumbs up, share the video with your friends so everyone can see what's going on. Yeah, what's going on. I'd like to know where you got the notion. Our young global leaders are selected by the top editors in chief around the world. Around 150 are chosen each year, around of, of whom about 125 become active and they go to Davos and they go to regional meetings. I benefit from global young global leader early days when I listen to Bill Gates and Bill Clinton and George Soros these guys at that time we don't have that many people a lot of the folks here knew each other already and my hope was to meet them for the first time and um, it's going pretty well we can easily address taboos we can tell politicians how things really are um, which obviously once we're 10 years further and we're all running countries or huge companies or whatever it might sl become slightly more difficult there's an initiative launched called the public leadership initiative by YGLs and the aim was to try to capture um, the interest of young global leaders, no matter which sector that they are from, to potentially serve their countries. We've already had a, a number of people that have gone through that program who have then decided to run for office. My commitment will be to add value. We'll be part of the young leaders yes, initiative. This is Merkel, Tony Blair. Um, say we're all, even uh, President Putin, say we're all young global leaders before. Prime Minister of Ireland, uh, Leo Varadkar, uh, a particular welcome because you are also one of our young global leaders. Sheikh Hamdan is, despite his young age, chairman of the Executive Council of Dubai, the highest government authority in the Emirate. Very proud to say that His Highness is also a young global leader of the World Economic Forum. The leader of the UK right now, David Cameron, was named the young global leader in 2006. I'm Bakatsi, the Prime Minister of Georgia and a young global leader. Haken of Norway. Haken is the Crown Prince of Norway. Uh, he's also a member of our Young Global Leaders alumni community. President Calderon, you had been uh, selected in 1997 as a global leader for tomorrow. You have already in 1993 been here for the first time as a global leader for tomorrow. And Klaus uh, Schwab, I really have to congratulate you for your farsightedness. You picked out again the right individual. Monsieur De Croo, uh, vous avez été young global leader du Forum Économique Mondial. Vous avez récemment fait une visioconférence avec Klaus Schwab. I'd like to explore um, a little bit what it's like to be a new young global leader. The, the young Gavin Newsom, uh, the uh, young, energetic, innovative mayor of San Francisco. He is also among those who are the uh, young global leaders here at Davos this year. Bozidar Jelic, the deputy prime minister for European integration and minister of science and technology development of Serbia and a young global leader. She was named a young global leader by the World Economic Forum. Minister Jolie. Minister Mohamed Lutfi, the Minister of Trade of Indonesia and a young global leader. Juan Carlos Pinzon Bueno, Minister of the National Defense of Colombia, young global leader. Christia Freeland, she's the Minister of International Trade of Canada and used to be a young global leader of the World Economic Forum, if I may uh, mention I'm that. I'm afraid it's true. What we are very proud of now is a young generation like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, um, President of, Brazil, of uh, Argentina and so on, so that we penetrate the cabinets. So yesterday I was at a, rece at a reception for Prime Minister of 
Trudeau, and I know that half of this cabinet, or even more half of uh, half of this cabinet, are for our actually young noble leaders of the world. Correct. That's true in Argentina as well. It's true in Argentina and uh, it's true in France now. I mean, with the president, with the young global leader. Klaus Schwab is the head of the World Economic Forum, and he bragged how his subversive WWEF World Economic Forum has quoted infiltrated governments around the world. He said that his organization had penetrated more than half of Canada's cabinet. Could the member please name which cabinet ministers are on board with the WEF's agenda? My concern is the deputy. Uh, order, order, order. I, I know he was. I know the, uh, uh, the member was in a, a really good, good question there, but the the, uh, the audio is really, really bad, and the video is really, really bad as well. That member is promoting open disinformation. That's not the. I think you know. My mother had an expression: out of everything terrible, something good will come if you look hard enough for it. I think this presents us with some significant opportunities to make some real changes. You know, we are at an inflection point, I believe, in the world economy. Not just the world economy, in the world. It occurs every three or four generations. As one of as the, uh, one of the top military people said to me in a secure meeting the other day, 60, 60 million people died between 1900 and 1946. And uh, since then, we established a liberal world order, and that hadn't happened in a long while. A lot of people died, but nowhere near the chaos. And now is a time when things are shifting. We're gonna, there's gonna be a new world order out there, and we've got to lead it, and we've got to unite the rest of the free world in doing it.